All right, TGIF. After being pecked by a radioactive bird, somewhat mannered T. Tuthill feels an overwhelming compulsion to become Kinius, the sky dude. All right, Friday, May 19th, 2023. Kinius here. And uh, where we last left off, it was uh, raining, and it's raining again. And I don't mind. I love the rain. You know, and we desperately need it here in, in Colorado where I'm at. So welcome back to uh, Friday afternoon. And I didn't uh, get any further than uh, where we left off last night. Just too tired. It was a busy day yesterday. Kind of a busy morning this morning, and you're probably going to catch me yawning a lot. I hope not. So here we are at um, where we're uh, my home base, Meadow Lake Airport in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's a uh, ICAO. That is the term. Uh, that's the what they use to identify airports. They're ICAO. It's the four letter designator. In this case, Meadow Lakes. Meadow Lakes. ICAO is K Fly. We got the best of them all. For such a small little tiny airport out in the middle of nowhere, you know, we got the best. We got the best name. This is where my dad got his uh, his pilot license. I've made it a lot further than he has. Well, you know, in this kind of experience, he was never um, instrument rated. Just visual flight rules only. And, um, because of that, he didn't uh, he didn't get very far, and unfortunately, because of that, he got caught in a bad situation. The weather around here changes so fast, and he found himself in a really bad situation, and it unnerved him so much. But back then, they didn't have things like this, you know, to spend endless hours learning and and um. So yeah, I caught himself in a bad situation and had to be talked in by air traffic control and just uh, enough to make a person quit flying. We had better, uh, okay, good. We got to check our tanks here. Good. So um, I'm going to get a pushback. I was saying yesterday, you know, in the, in the, since uh, the first transmission, we've just been doing these flights. Something's off. What is off? It's the weather and the time. This is not right. I'm like, it's not like that. It's it's nasty and overcast outside. And um, we've been doing the same runs, you know, back and forth. So for a change of scenery, I said, I'm going to try to kind of fly up to Denver and see what the jobs are like up there. We haven't done anything like that. Tried really going to, you know, another airport. And I'm not really uh, sure if I have to change my location. But we'll know more. It'll only take us, uh, it'll take a, a few minutes to get up to Denver. It's not that far. In a drive, it's about... No, uh -huh. be about 30 minutes or more. Depending on the traffic, 45 minutes. Depending on the traffic, an hour. All the people that are moving here, it could be longer than that. I shan't complain about our uh, our people problems here today. All right, so let's just announce that we're going to head north. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for taking even a minute out of your day. Tune in to see what Kenny is the Sky Dude is up to today or follow some of these flights. If you've never done any of this, this uh, flight stuff, definitely recommend checking out, and you'd like to get started, I definitely recommend checking out uh, some of the videos that I've created. And uh, I try to... I try to explain everything in a really simple manner that uh, I understand. 
And I found that a lot of people are responding saying, hey, man, you, you're speaking my language. You're talking on a level that I understand. And they really appreciate the videos. So if that's you and you are intimidated by certain other people's videos. Oh, you know what? I didn't open the fuel line. It's so hard to see the fuel valve valve down here in this plane. I really need like some white carpet. But there we go. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. I believe we can get the METAR up here, but uh, METAR, the wind and you, remember those 1950s movies? You know, it was whatever and you, you know. Ladies of the night and you. High speed car chases and you. So the wind and you, I want to show you a neat website. So if you'll just bear with me for a minute, uh, I want to show you something. Okay, so let me go get it, and then I will create a window in the transmission for you to see. Okay, I have the site up. It's been a while since I've been here, so I'm probably going to fumble around a bit, a little bit. But they say if you don't use it, you kind of lose it. And now I can try to create and open the a window in the transition using magic here to show you what this site looks like. Aviationweather.gov, something the government actually does that is helpful. Okay. So aviationweather.gov, but what I am looking for at the top here is, let's see, I'm looking for METARs, okay, and then I want to come down here, there's Denver, so let's start zooming in down here. Here's Colorado Springs. If I keep zooming in, I'll find us at Fly. There's the Air Academy. I think we'd pop up. There we are. Okay. So, and then there's the legend. Let me scroll down here. The legend. Okay. No, actually, I don't know what MVFR is. I need to... Uh, I need to take a refresher course on this, but what I'm looking at here is the direction of the winds over the whole state in general, or at least the areas that we're going to be flying. Zoom out a little bit. So we were there. The wind's blowing southward here, kind of blowing east here. So most of the wind's kind of against us. It's blowing south here from Centennial. That's the only wind gusts that are pushing west from the Denver airport. So normally you use these on, uh, well, uh, it depends. There's so many aviation tools for people to use now. I don't know how many people use it, but it's good. But uh, when you're training, they say, oh, well, we really want you to uh, study these. You know, like uh, as many days as possible before you take a, a flight, they want you to become have an, a general understanding of how the winds change throughout the day. And you find that uh, you'll start catching patterns after a while. Once you pay attention to these for a long time, you start noticing on a daily basis how the winds move and how they change in your area. And uh, in the old days, for sure. And we'll still, I'm sure, with these smaller planes you still have to spend a lot of time you know uh 
and we're already set to decode METARs. Okay, so what that means is if I think if I come down here and click on Colorado Springs again, the K-Fly, Napa, I don't want too far, there's Pueblo, Colorado Springs, K-Fly. So when we click, do we get there? Is That's what I wanted to see. Make sure you're seeing this all right. Yeah. Okay, so then we get our what's called our decode. So the temperature is 51, 2.43, and that's something we'll talk about later. Altimeter 30.4, so we're going to have to change our altimeter setting. Visibility 3 miles. Yeah, it's nasty out there, just as far as visibility anyway. The ceiling, 3,500 feet. Very overcast today. And the wind, this is what I was looking at. Uh, the wind's <clears throat> basically northeast. And it's not a big factor today, only three knots. So if you want a free site to study the winds in your area on a daily basis, keep it open and up in the corner and just keep an eye on things. And then again, the, you'll, you have the legend down here, which you can learn how to read. And uh, I'd watch a couple of videos on it. Okay. So we do have our uh, altimeter reading 30.4. So let me close this now and get back to our cockpit. All right, we have the cabin lights on. No matter what the lights in this thing, it just aren't bright enough. Uh, our altimeter right here. It's a standard 2992 for sea level. And because of the weather today, we are adjusting it right now to, and these change constantly. So when we're running around, you're going to hear air traffic control calling out altimeter settings. Is it 304? One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, right in, right in there. Three, zero, four. Okay. That's really all we have to do. We've already got our taxi clearance. Clearance. And I've got some coffee. I mentioned in the first one, the first episode, they don't, they don't want you to drink coffee because it creates an urgency it's a diuretic so they they would tell you you know people love coffee these days and we understand but as a pilot you should really consider yourself consider weaning yourself off of coffee double yellow lines mean stop even if there's no tower so right away traffic, when you're coming out to a runway, you have to stop at these double yellow lines. If you're coming off the runway, coming in for landing and land, you have the right of way. We'll take out to the south and then immediately turn north here. Don't really need any flaps. Make sure those are up and we're off. All right, so yeah. And uh, so we're going to find out if we uh, can get different types of jobs and maybe some more interesting ones, at least, you know, a little bit of a change of scenery. We'll see what Denver has to offer. Because we've done enough trips to the Will Roger, Roger Shrine and the Royal Gorge by now. All right, I'm taking off from Meadow Lake because it's mostly a training facility. They want all traffic to turn east. They don't want, especially all the rookies, they don't want them turning in towards Colorado Springs. There's so much development out here now, but it's still a lot of open space. So, you know, if you have to make an emergency landing, 
plenty of fields out here. It's a good place to learn how to fly. And learning how to fly at higher altitudes. Because normally you're trained to uh, always have pretty much like a fuel mixture. You know, a full mixture uh, when you take off. But that's standard for sea level stuff. Completely different for up here. All right. Colorado Springs approach Kineas 21 is type Cessna 152 2 miles east of Kilo Foxtrot Lima Yankee 7100 feet. Request flight following. We're going to get our squat code here. Watch these numbers. 6055. So Steve put in our squat code for us. So normally I I'd handle all that myself, but there's already too much to do. So um I mean you can you can dial in your squat code yourself. Just turn turn all these these knobs here. It's a transponder code. It's our radar code. And if you don't squawk properly, the worst case scenario, they'll shoot you out of the sky. I'm not kidding. You know, worst case scenario. And I remind myself to be a little bit more baby on this engine. Bring the, uh, RPMs down after takeoff. All right. So headed north to Denver, past Castle Rock coming up. We're going over Black Forest right now. And as you can see, yeah, very, very low clouds today and beautiful, beautiful rain not currently getting any right here we'd see it on our uh, our windscreen doing good planes wanting to level out eh, a little bit a little bit of bouncing but she's staying right in right in the range you know That's wonderful. Right there, baby. Right there. That's good enough for me. That's almost perfectly straight and level. Love it. So I was talking about the mixture. This is your mixture lever, lever right here. And it uh, controls your air to fuel ratio. It's not automatic. It is on, uh, you know, like with cars today, it's automatic. Cars used to have chokes and stuff like this. Back in the, I wish they would. I wish they'd bring it back so we could control it a little, little bit better on our own. But, you know, people. Uh, but using this, watch what happens when I pull it out. I'm going to slowly start easing it back. Watch up here, the RPMs. Make sure you're still seeing what I'm seeing. Get this out of the way here. So watch the RPMs here. When I uh, bring it down, I'll... Um, for a moment, I'll almost kill the engine. A little bit more, a little bit more. There's going to be a sharp drop. Right there. That's where we don't want to go below. And I just want to like push it in a tiny bit more. And for high altitudes, that is pretty much right where you want to be. So you save a lot of fuel. You can save a lot of fuel up here normally again they want it shoved all the way in and it helps cool the engine too but uh we don't really have to worry about that today i don't think isn't that funny that putting more gas into an engine can cool it yeah turn us a little bit we're over Black Force now. Let's see if we can get over I-25. 
and follow I-25 a little bit closely. So if you're familiar with the area, some of the sites might seem, you might like recognize things. It said, this is all black forest. Cherokee Trail Ranch. You can't control the plane when you're in this particular view. I don't know how to turn off all the uh, all the gauges. It's different from our drone view. Our drone view hasn't any uh, any of the cockpit stuff, but it's an entirely different beast, you know. And, but then there's this view, which is, uh, I don't know what they call it, like third person or I'm not really sure. But you're still able to control the plane. When you're in drone mode, you, you can't control your plane. It's just, you can control the drone. And that's it. about this one is you can't really control the camera on this one I don't believe nope so we can change it from here I don't know yeah a little bit not much though not like the drone start making out the mountains in front of us here and we are uh, heading west start turning us some I think rainy days and the clouds are more beautiful sometimes than just a sunny day something it's interesting you know it's not just empty blue sky and you see things kind of in their more true color sun isn't desaturating everything we're a beautiful world so funny you can live in a place for your whole life and then uh you start flying it it's like wow i never knew that was there and i never knew that was there and you discover so many interesting things about where you live that you just really can't see unless you're in the air fly over it a lot so what are your we had one person join in the chat yesterday and that was our first person and he, he he dipped out right after that i'm sorry i really didn't get to communicate i because i haven't had anybody i don't normally pay attention but i'm trying to and I've, I've got the chat open so if you are lurking about please don't be shy say hello in the in the chat This looks like the back road to Denver. Let me turn a little bit more west. I'm so happy that we have finally worked out all the bugs in the, uh, in the first couple of days but you know story-wise it made for an interesting uh story that you know trying to transition and become a a sky dude they will try to thwart you and and mess you up and stop you from trying to become a sky dude 
throw obstacles in your way and forget to tell you certain bits of information that you need to know. So storyline wise, even though I really wouldn't watch episode two and three, they're just depressing because I'm trying to figure things out. Uh, it really lends to the, uh, you know, the hero struggling, having a, a struggle when he first starts. And the imaginary nemesis of the people back at Sky Dude's headquarters who don't think that this rookie can make it as a Sky Dude. But I think I can. Not only, you know, I think I can fly anything at this point. And, uh, and I, I think I haven't flown every single plane. A lot of these planes, uh, you know, they don't interest me. I think this is I-25 coming up here. Uh, a lot of the planes, you know, they don't interest me that much. And, um, but I'm, I'm sure I could fly them. I don't think that there would be any problem. And I have, uh, I can fly jets. And I can fly airliners. And I can fly military aircraft. This looks a little small. This doesn't look like I-25. These off ramps and on ramps, they're strong. Ah, well, it doesn't really matter. We're, you know, we'll get there. Used to be some commercial. I can't remember who it was for. The guy would say, the earth is round, isn't it? Yeah, we'll get there. Good point. The earth is round. We'll get there. So, you know, I, 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 and I put in, um, you know, uh, hundreds of hours with different aircraft, uh, lots and lots and lots of hours, especially with like the A320 Neo. Then the 747, the seven, whatever the 747s are in here, intercontinentals, but man, those intercontinental flights. Ha oh, ha yawn. That's a lot. They make me nervous. I don't like flying over large bodies of water either. I just oof. anybody that's doing international flights on these airliners, they don't put floats on airliners just in case, which drives me nuts. You know? The whole plane at any point. Sorry, we're gonna have to land. What do you mean? Well, I'll just deploy some floats and We'll land this airliner on the on the ocean here and you know don't worry about anything we got you covered Do, do now you can start making out some of the mountains the foothills over there I love it. Everything's, you know, with all this weather and uh, the, the water finally coming in, everything around here just starts turning green, and it's so beautiful. Get that for us, Steve.
Sometimes it kind of flips out and I can't get back into the cockpit mode. That kind of looks like I-25 coming over Monument. I don't know. The in uh, the in flight VFR has been acting up in a bad way, and we've got some wind pushing us our nose straight up. And so when trying to use this and pull it up, it's been worthless. It just doesn't want to update quick. And yeah, this I twenty five. I'm pretty sure there's we're coming into we're passing over a monument that's past monument this is where it curves around towards castle rock and it's it's just not very good it doesn't help really in in most cases uh especially when it doesn't deliver your uh, roads and highways, the Bing map stuff, which I don't understand. But you can get a general idea where you're at. There's Centennial Airport here, Kappa. There's Denver International up here. So we'll uh, maybe we'll just land at Kappa and see if you know if we can pull up any Denver jobs. So what are your plans for the weekend? We have a, uh, I think there were some friends are having their home redecorated and have been for a while. And we're waiting on the status to when that's all completed. We're supposed to be a uh, gaming with them and uh, continuing playing some Dungeons and Dragons. And I am supposed to be, you know, we're kind of all taking turns. We're learning fifth edition. So we're all kind of taking turns co-dming and it's my turn so I have been uh, busily learning much as I can about Forgotten Realms and the area all around Baldur's Gate up to Waterdeep over to El Torel Scornabel and all the places in between and I even picked up a uh, Baldur's Gate 3 to see what, you know, they had to say. And they feature, uh, you know, some of the places in between El Torel and Baldur's Gate, like uh, some of the villages and inns and places. Giving me a feel for what that's like. So it should be pretty good. I've had plenty of weeks now to get prepared and So coming up right in front of us here Castle Rock I used to live here for a while When there was nothing here and it's just grown to massive proportions. Literally used to be just a sleepy little town. 
and as you can see down there there's stuff everywhere now like they imported a whole nation of people to just come in and fill the area yeah I don't want to get into too much politics because that gets nasty but you know what I mean What's that line from the Eagles song? If you call someplace paradise, kiss it goodbye. So I was happy that uh, I lived there just, you know, before it really. Before it really did all of this. Let me get back to my, can I get my drone? My drone, please. Drone. That's not drone. This is drone. Before it did all of this. And that's all built up now. This is an old terrain map. But there was there used to be nothing out here. And literally almost like overnight. So we were there and my dad actually did was in heavy construction. So did a lot of the road work and setting up these areas out there to be <laughs> colonized. None of that was there. None of this stuff. So as we're coming in towards Denver, eventually this is all going to connect. Sad. You're going to fill it all in. I think it's a dang shame. And there are more coming and more coming and more coming. But again, that's all I should really say about that. When you're creating uh, these, they ask you, are you talking about anything controversial? Mm, no. Looks like some blue, blue skies are moving in. our RPM jump up again I must have bumped my throttle In the real world in the for visual flight rules they would ground you if you're not instrument rated they're like no you ain't flying today nope no 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 unless it's almost darn near perfect conditions and there are no clouds around you aren't flying Should have plugged in some VOR. Did a lot of video messing with the VOR yesterday. Uh, demonstrating how I was demonstrating how they work. To help you find your way around the radio stations. And uh, and they can help you navigate. So let's see if I can uh, pull up one. At least this does show you the uh but it doesn't give you, I don't believe it gives you the frequency in the old one when you'd pull up a uh somehow or another I have turned east
off alone. That's better. Cap is over here. Uh, what I was looking for is any VORs out here, and right off the bat, I'm not seeing any on this map. It's not a good one. You should really use other tools like Sky Vector. There's a, a VOR, but in the old one, you could just click on it. You can get the frequency to put in there. No. We're heading too far west. <clears throat> This is the weakest link for the simulator by far. The VFR map is just garbage. Truthiness, it's the truth. I mean, it, it just, it's, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. See, as I zoom in and out, it's already, it's already removed information. We can't even see cap anymore. Unless you like blow it up and that's just horrible. Then it doesn't want to resize properly. So tons and tons and tons of tons of updates since this thing is released and and nothing for this just sad So that is our destination right there. Go and call it in. <coughs> Centennial Tower Kinius 21 is 5 miles southeast, 6400 feet with whiskey to land. With whiskey They're telling me unbelievable. Well, what are you supposed to do? Man, I don't, I honestly have to just, dis so what they're, what they have just said. All right, so Roger, Kinius, two, one. what they have said is that the weather is so bad, it's an instrument flight rules only, and they're and they're denying us the ability to land. And so, what do you do? You know, what can I do uh, other than? Break the law? I really don't know. Go find another air, you know, go find an airstrip or a grass field. So, no, I'm not, you know. 
So I'm probably just gonna break the law. Get me back to the cockpit, please. Crossing over I-25 as it heads to C or C C470. Yeah, they're going to be awful mad. Tell me I have no permissions to land. But okay. Be very good. Up over the top of this thing. Come on. No, the other way. Or do shut up. I haven't chewed this out yet. So I wanted to come here and uh, just just to see if now if we have to do a relocate or if we can get a job see if the, the jobs change so let's now go to trying to change something here so you can view along in the transmission that's a neo fly New exploration location. No, I'm not showing any job. Oh, I'm in the right, I'm in the right. Yeah, there we go. These are all Colorado Springs jobs. Huh. Okay, so let's do this then. Let's it's gonna be expensive. Watch. Let's relocate. And let's type in Kappa. $1,337. Yeah. didn't change the jobs not moving the plane okay 
So now both the plane. Oh, it was a chuck. Chuck will cash. Okay, it uh yes. Now we have good. Okay, so now after moving the plane and moving the pilot, both, now we are seeing Denver related jobs. There's there's Denver International right there. Dun, dun, dun. And we've gotten some of these for the very first time. We've never had access to these before. And I don't. I think you need specialized, uh, a specialized airplane, or one equipped with like water to do these. So you'll have to make a ton of money. But they pay good. That's for sure. What's this? So you'll need a helicopter for that one. Emergency. Oh, yeah, so it's probably a good idea to save up some money to get other planes to do the emergency stuff. Those are for Colorado Springs. We don't want to go back there. Um, a, B, J, C. That's a $4,000 job right there. That's probably the our best paying option at the moment. Where is K B J C? Don't know. So this is where, I mean, on this thing, we can just uh, try to figure it out. Let's see. I don't want to pick it before knowing exactly where it's at. So using a tool like sky vector can help us. So let me open that up again set up the screen so you can see it sky vector now change this so you can see it okay you should now be seeing sky vector all right, and we're looking for um, those Photoshop. Don't need that. Eating up resources. A, B, J, C. So in Sky Vector, up here in the top, A, B, J, C. And those are METAR. And it's right here. KBJC Broomfield. Okay. So we are here at Centennial. That's not very far. So you can even set up a flight plan. So Tampa. What was that? KBJC. And that will create a distance, so 24 miles. Okay. And that's I-25 there, I think. So if we had... Now let's see if there's any VOR in the area. There's one here. Jeffco VOR. Where is the station? Dun, dun, dun. And what I'm looking at is this V O R D O M E right here. V O R, not a D M E, that's distance measuring equipment. But I'm trying to find where's the where's the actual station located? Usually not too far from the box with the information. But right at the moment, my brain is not seeing the icon. Or the station. Just know that it's over here. Rocky Mountain Metro.
There's Denver International here. Denver's the Broncos Stadium there. Looks like they're doing some rocket launching over here. Neat thing about this website is it does update actively is like things that are <clears throat> it's one of those apps that updates as things are happening in the real world in flight. So another reason why it's valuable if you're trying to really simulate uh, like this area here. That's that's kind of like a no-fly zone right now. It's a flight hazard. They're doing something here. So chances are if you're planning a flight, you want to avoid that area. All right, well, we'll take it. It's not far. And... I suppose we could use the, the Jeffco VOR 1154. Okay, so we'll come back over. Let's close that sky vector screen. And we'll pick that job. We're going to only make, uh, you know, we just spent like three grand moving here. So we'll make a grand or so. going on here no pilot assigned to this that plane and that fixes that hello captain nice to see you again mm-hmm thank you yeah off start your engine or did our job just vanish it did once that kicked in so that four thousand dollar job is gone now there's still flights over there to KBJC, but these are all just 272. Man, there were some better paying jobs down in uh, the Springs. Well, that's right. That's the most high paying one. Two Good morning, pilot. Ready for your cargo mission? Yes. Yes, we are. Transporter from dispatch. Loading cargo. Please stand by. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo is on Centennial board. Ground, you are Kitties, clear to taxi to the runway and take off. Taxi to the act of departing straight out. Okay, so. All right, well, I'm going to have. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so a little exchange there again. They're saying that they they really don't want anybody flying that is an instrument flight rated. Now I don't know how uh, or if it will. <clears throat> you think about what I'm trying to say here. I don't know if or it will disrupt the active job if you. Go back out to the main menu and set things as IFR. It's such a short journey, but what they're telling us is that they don't really want lights going on because they they think that well, according to the way things are set up, I'm they consider me a visual flight rules only pilot at the moment. And like I said, the conditions are so crap. 
They don't want anybody flying. So I can either break the rules or invoke my superpower, which I think I'll do. And although I really appreciate this uh, lovely, lovely, lovely weather, I am going to use my superpowers. to leave the time the same, but I'm changing the weather. So we just don't, we don't have to deal with that. Okay. So. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. Okay. Uh, take a sip of coffee here. <clears throat> you want to smoke? Just crack the window. I don't mind. I'm going to light up. I have a quick one while we're taxiing. Really need a new setup for a lot of the stuff. And I need a new, I, I mentioned yesterday. I really need to get a wireless mouse. The way things are set up on this desk, every time I move, I end up bouncing the cord. Yeah. Going the screen all over the place. Oh yeah, I was pointing out yesterday, let me build the engine here, or throttle. If you're, if you don't like taxing and you, you just want to hand it over to your AI, once you get taxi clearance, you can turn on the AI pilot and have Steve take over, or whatever you call your AI pilot. Everybody that I talk to, they do seem to have a name they do come up with a name for their, their AI pilot. Like I call mine Steve. Well, I call mine Jake. Nice. So you can have your, your AI uh, do the taxing. You're doing other things like having a cigarette, do coffee. It's down in Pueblo today. Try to go into the mill stop. Just <laughs> unbelievable Mexican restaurant and uh, I you know I've tried a lot all over the place and I we cook it and I grew up with it and so yeah I think I kind of know what's good and what's not this stuff is ab they're absolutely amazing not a hundred percent but head and shoulders over most heads and shoulders we got there today and there was a 45 minute wait i'm so sad i was looking forward to having lunch that we had to head to the pantry instead which is fine but it's that good that any given mo any given time they're always packed centennial tower kinius 21 ready at runway tree five right straight and it and it's a real shame. Okay, so Steve got us here. If you leave him engaged, for takeoff, runway tree, five right, he'll taxi out and he'll take off, but he'll only go, at, once he's up in the air, he just goes straight forward. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't know where we're going. <clears throat> so at some point you have to disengage him. So I'll let him get us up.
Uh, so I was saying it's such a shame that there's such a small place and a family owned place and there's all these other, you know, chain restaurants and everything. And they've got these, you know, three dining halls and, you know, humongous bars and their food is garbage. And it's so sad that, you know, the mill stop, whatever. It's in such a small location. It's like an old school diner. It's been there forever. And it used to serve all the, uh, the miners every day that would come and grow and take a tunnel under the uh, road to, or tunnel to go over to the, uh, the steel yards. Come on, Steve, you're, you're drifting there, buddy. Have a safe journey, pilot. That's some load you have there. Uh, yes. That one always throws me. Okay, so I wanted to quickly get that frequency from uh, Sky Vector again. Not that it's going to really help us too much because I can't really identify where it's at. 1154. One one five four. Put it in active, and there it is. And let me center it up. Okay, so it is basically the core setting we were following yesterday. All right, Steve, I'm taking back over. He, every time he hands it over, he's like, yeah, fine. Throws it like, instead of just keeping us nice and straight and level, it's like he has a fit and like, yeah, fine. Throws it down. Yeah, see if you can recover from that, buddy boy. Come on, Steve, R relax. I know you want to fly, but, but I got it. Okay, so that VOR is in that direction. And that's approximately where we want to go. Okay, so we're starting to see Denver out there ahead of us. It's the southern tip of Denver. You can see the most majority of it out there about 1 o'clock. And the flaps back down. Flaps have been sticking on us like mad. Don't know why? Okay, they're up. Okay, now from the, you won't be able to see this. I'm gonna just quickly reference sky vector again. So from that airport, from that VOR, that's about 45 degrees from where the VOR seems to be. So I'm going to put it at So I'm going to So I'm going to set this for the 90 radial. So I'll know when I cross over it anyway. Huh. It's from. Now we want the two. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
puts 45. That puts us at from. Behind us. Now I got nothing. Do again at 45. Well, uh, I'll take you to uh, the Broncos Stadium, and I'll show you Elish Gardens since we're heading this way. Uh, the Nuggets, uh, I don't know if their arena is now. I, I should have asked if the arena is now still where the old McNichols is. It's got a new name, like Ball or something like that. I don't really follow sports. I follow Broncos occasionally. But I kind of retired from sports when Elway retired. I had enough. Tired of, got tired of watching sports. I know. I hear gasping now. What? Yeah, I know. Not my thing anymore. I can't wait to get the next uh, another super duper. This is not a super duper computer. This is was uh, just enough to meet the minimum minimum requirements so that I could get in to the alpha when this was in alpha. So for the first year, I participated in the alpha and helped with. Testing and yada, 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 yada. To help get the simulator ready for release. And so they wanted all types of systems. They wanted, you know, the minimum requirements up to whatever, you know, Uber you could throw at it. See how it would do. And so, um, so I picked up this machine just to meet the minimum requirements. It's a Dell. It's a Dell mid-range and a AMD RX 780. So yeah, and it's not a beefy machine, so I can't do all. You know, I can't throw everything into ultras and I look, I look forward to the day that I can. So So my pitch is if you're loaded If you are rich and loaded And you would like to help me Get a new computer uh, I'm not going to say no You'd like to jump into chat and throw a super chat my way throw some uh some cash at me to help me out great uh in the next year i mean i have plans i've been setting aside and uh just waiting for price to go back down after covid and yada 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 and uh so there will be a time here at some point where I am going to get an Uber machine. I am so impressed with this machine though, what it has been able to do. And for photos and stuff, you know, I can come in and tweak it and and uh, set it to ultras. What I'm gonna do, uh, use my special superhero abilities here. Freeze time and break out the drone camera.
So for this being a mid-range machine, and if you're thinking, well, I can't do this, I, I, you're going to need a super machine to run these simulators. No, you don't. You don't. And you can get by. And if your goal is not sightseeing and your goal is to learn, it's not important anyway. The goal is to learn. The goal is not to, you know, but sightseeing sure helps. It sure makes it nice. And um, so, yeah, I can't wait to have RTX and... NVIDIA, whatever they're at now. 90,000 XT RTX plus whatever. Or whatever it will be. Um, But I haven't been disappointed with AMD. I don't know. It's kind of tough. Maybe I will go with AMD. But I've always been an NVIDIA person until now. But I'm really impressed. Been very impressed with this AMD system. Over here, Elitch Gardens. I I like the old one. It used to be in an area of town that that literally had beautiful gardens and it's a humongous amusement park. And uh, you know, I didn't look to see. I don't know that it's here. They've the old the old uh, Denver Nuggets McNichols Arena used to be right across the street from the stadium. I don't know where they have the Nugget Stadium now. That's it over there or not. But there's Denver again, back over there. All right. Let's keep going. I said, you know, one way to in visual flight rules flying, one of the best ways is just all the main roads. So in Sky Vector, it said if we follow, you know, I was looking, if we follow I-25. It'll get us going in the right direction. But yeah, everything with these older machines, even with some of the newer ones, sometimes it makes everything look like we're post-apocalyptic. It kind of looks... Half destroyed. That is Coors Field coming into view. The wing strut right there. If you're a baseball fan, right there, there's Coors Field. Center of the screen. Train yards. Is it this way? I think I-25 is turning this way. I was over there somewhere yesterday. Had to move a vehicle. I was out that away. Huge rail yards. Sand factory. So let's get that crappy map out. Well. And I'm not getting any reading. We haven't crossed over that radial for the VOR. We dial it out and see which way it is. Come on. It's at 30, so still this way. But again, it was 45 degrees off of that, so... I'm heading this way but once we get there it's still not right there 
that could be it up ahead i'm already seeing some that pulsing runway light let me go ahead and get that uh crappy in-game vfr It used to be at least respond properly and resize properly to whatever, there we go, to whatever dimensions you pulled it. But now it just seems to, yeah, there's the airport that we want. It just, Underneath us, above us, where are we? I don't see us. And it sounds like we're far off. VOR is way over here now. So we've, we've passed it. I swore I pulled the engine back and there it goes almost full throttle again, redlining. 
Where is it? Where did it go? Ah, oh, we're over the top of it. See the needle moving? Okay, so from here, I want it about 45 degrees. And take our crappy map. That's it right below us, KBJC. Okay, so let's call it in and circle back for a landing. Are right. right left downwind runway tree zero right kitty is two one kitty is two one wind calm clear to land runway tree zero right clear to land Runway tree zero, right? Kitty is two one. Pop sticking again. Touchdown. Welcome. Please vacate the runway and proceed to parking. Kitty is 2 1, turn next taxiway. Right. Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. Well, not that taxiway.
And we are here. Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Somebody says there is an add-on where you can hop out and walk around. That would be kind of nice. We're catching a lot of uh, lag here. I wonder if it's Denver itself. Transporter from dispatch. Everything seems okay. The customer looks happy. Mission ended. I didn't think it was customers. I thought it was uh, magazines or something. Everything is on board. But we haven't picked another job yet. I know it's been a long time. I normally don't mess with this, but I know that there's a way to open your door. Don't remember how. But I just, again, you know, messing with that kind of stuff is just not the way I usually do. All right. So let's go back to the job board. It is two, four, two, five, three, one. That's a pretty good one. Three, one, three, five. That's better. Three, five, nine. Even better. ECFO. That is the highest paying one. Let's go back over and where are we at? We're at K. KBJC. And we want KCFO. Oh, to where the, the rocket launch is going on. 28 miles. Here's the Denver VOR. And it is like 100 degrees, 100 degree radial approximately off of the Denver VOR, which is 1179. Let's put that in now. Mm. 
one seven nine make it active we're too low at the moment to receive anything it's line of sight so once you get into the air and then you can usually pick up pick up the signal okay so we want to taxi to east take off to the east So we're supposed to take 350 pounds of medicine. And hold short runway tree zero right using taxiway Lima Echo Kineas 21. Colorado Air and Spaceport is what KCFO is. How interesting. Hello, transporter. Your cargo is waiting for you in the parking. I'm here. The ground crew are loading the cargo. Stand by. All right, and here we also need to check this, which I didn't do last time. Is bring this up and that way if there's additional cargo that we need to have on board for the extra bonus XP like this right here we need to be at 525 pounds once everything's done loading so we'll have might have to make up the difference okay so we do so come into your weights okay, pilot. That's the last of the crate secured, and the cargo door is closed and latched. You are clear to taxi. Excellent. So we need to be at 525 pounds. So grab this. And they want us all the way. It's going to be heavy. 528. So now, 525. So I'm, I slipped. 534. Now we're in the green. So, uh, boy, we're heavy. I could drop some fuel. It's only 28 miles. Doesn't seem to make that. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Can we type that in? Try to bring it a little closer. 525. Come on. Seven. It's touchy. We'll leave it. Th uh, no, it slipped again. Every time I take my finger off of it, it slides a little bit. There. Okay, so now you see over here, the payload's matching. We're going to get a plus two. Now it says we have no fuel. That's our maximum allowed weight. All right, no big deal. So it's going to be a heavy flight, but we're all right. You're good to go. Thank Contact you. The tower for clearance. Already did. I've got to figure out where now our drone is like somewhere else completely miles down range. Where are you? Is that the airport that we're at is that us sitting over there. I think so. Yes. Got a mind of 
its own. So Jerry Schwarzenegger wants to do King Conan 40 years later. Yeah, it was released in like 1982. I was huge. I've been waiting for what, 40? Yeah, 40 years. For 41 years? Lord Almighty. What a franchise to not take advantage of all this time. They've all been garbage. Everything out after, like even Conan 2, The Destroyer, I didn't like it. Just something about it was too froofy, you know? The, everybody, I just didn't like any of the characters. Just didn't like it. The first one was right on. The very first Conan movie, that's the, the way it should feel. In my opinion, that's the feel. And after that, and then the Jason Momoa one. <laughs> a bunch of garbage that was. What a franchise to completely not take advantage of. That and Tarzan. I am. Okay, I want him to taxi so I can uh, sneak off for a moment and uh, use the facilities. So, Steve, if you would, please, get us out to the runway. Put Steve up here in the corner. So pardon me, dear listener, uh, dear viewer. I need uh, a minute or two to run off and oh, the flaps are down. And I'll let Steve take it. We're only getting to the runway anyway. I'll be right back.
Looks like Steve's doing a fine job. Untangle some of this stuff on my desk. Speaker cord and headphone cords are... Good, at perfect timing, he's here. All right. Bring this back to two nine nine two. And we just need to go east and pick up our VOR. So again, said I'm not a sports person, but I got family who are all into it. We're just so excited and just non-stop talking today about the uh the denver nuggets game last night about uh against the lakers and um very super close game they're saying and uh you know it's pretty funny moments and i actually caught some of the videos and memes today making fun of lebron Thank you very much, dispatch. She's the only one at headquarters on my side. I pulled the flaps. Probably shouldn't have pulled them so soon. <laughs> That's a little little cushion That's east. So we're up in the air. There's our VOR. It's active now. Let's go ahead and uh, East Denver is really causing lag. That big. Okay. Okay. So east. Right there. Uh, 
that's our heading. Uh, if you're wondering yeah what what you know like i said earlier I, I said i can fly a lot of things and i really recommend if you're interested in seeing what i can do in other planes that i can fly uh check out the microsoft flight simulator playlist and because of problems with youtube for a while I think more than half of the videos that I had actually done are now no longer on YouTube. I had done so many videos and they're like, I didn't know what the problem was. So at one point I just kind of, I was so frustrated. I just started pulling things and I didn't think, well, back it up, download it. I just, I deleted it. I don't care anymore. And, uh, But I am so much is is gone now and other games that I was playing that footage is all gone now but there's still quite a bit of stuff in the Microsoft Flight Simulator playlist most importantly my training which will teach you how to do instrument flying and I'm not the best, but I needed to demonstrate that I know how to do it. So there's lots of professionals out there and non-professionals that are just simulator guys that will teach you how to fly. They'll they'll have they have their own training lessons. But I also needed to demonstrate that I know how to do it. So I do have a ton of I do have a ton of videos that are out there that are my own training videos that place I passed that when I saw that that building for the first time down there with that big dome what the heck is it now oh man confused that one right there that building right there I saw that it's like a satellite dish in the side of it such an interesting building to see driving down the road and I'm off course not in the car the mouse is bouncing around I'm off course over here telling everybody hey I can I've got training videos and then planes all over the place but yeah lots of training videos on instrument flying and just lots of training videos so uh, there's so much that is not being done in this kind of thing. And I don't know how advanced it is. I do know that you can do airliners in this. So at some point, we're going to have to be using instrument flying. And uh, that's actually, um, once we land at this next place, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go back out to the main menu and whatever job we, we get, I'm going to try to set it up as an instrument flying job. The viewer now has, has moved on us. Let's uh, dial it up again. Just a little bit. Yeah, we're pretty much on it. 
Uh, so, um, using entirely different maps, instrument flying rules maps, world high, world low, uh, SIDs and stars, which are, you know, um, the way I best can des describe SIDs and stars is when you leave your drive, so you, when you leave your driveway and you get onto a road, which will take you to a street or you're on a street, which will take you to a road either way, which will take you to an on-ramp to get onto a highway. That's kind of what SIDS and STARS are. They're standard instrument departures and they're standard terminal arrivals charts. And they show you the maps in the sky that are basically that. So if you're flying in from any place, imagine you're flying in and they have highways in the sky when you get off the highway, you're going to need an off ramp and you're going to need a road to get to a runway, which is like a driveway, right? So there have to, there has to be all these charts that explain where those points are in the sky. So whether you're leaving an airport or taking off from one, there are lots of procedures to follow that aren't being done anything like this at all at the moment. And there's there's things that I'm that I should be doing that I haven't been doing. Like for example, Denver approach Kenya's two one six thousand feet. Telling you exactly how talking over these guys. Things like doing our, our timing, like um where it's a twenty eight mile flight and figuring out exactly how many minutes it's expected to fly in that direction before you get to your destination. So timing things out, things that I'm not currently doing and I probably should do to stay in practice. I honestly don't remember right at the moment how to do the calculation for it. I usually use like a, called the flight computer, a little handheld device, looks like a slide rule. And you can determine approach Kenya's two one. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Kenya's two one Denver approach. Cleared through the Bravo airspace. Cleared through Bravo airspace. Kenya's two one. Oh, you know, there is a, you know, I just remembered there's a better map in here under this thing with this tool. It shows us where we're at. It shows the roads. We're at, not at Broomfield anymore. We're over here. Yeah. Does it show the. I don't see it. But it should show, yeah, where we're, where we're going to here. This is much better than it is so much better even when than what's in the simulator. Makes me mad. At least the simulator should be able to do that, and show you the highways and the roads. I'm off, of course, with the VOR. It is it uh, like over here. 
No, we're not pointing directly at that. I'm aiming for the radio station and not the airport itself. Wanted to head over towards the Denver International VOR. I should fly us by the airport so you can see it now that it's uh that I've got things set for clear and we'll fly a fly around Denver International and go to our destination. It's neat. I mean, it's kind of spooky, you know, with all that, well, controversial subjects that I want to avoid. Uh, who knows? The algorithms are crazy these days. Anytime you talk about anything, you're talking about something controversial. Well, everybody knows that Denver International's got a lot of creepy things going on there. Murals and statues and conspiracy theories and I used to really enjoy Stapleton downtown uh, and uh, I like it Denver International but it does kind of creep me out it really does something weird There's something very, very, very off about the people that created the place and the people that they commissioned to do artwork and the, the images that are around the place. And it's creepy, man. Who who does that? Who would who approved that? Why what why would you do that? What are you trying to say here? You don't know what I mean? Just Google it. Google it. You will understand what I mean quickly. And you will ask yourself the same questions. Who would do that? And why? And within in some ways, it's, it seems so charming the way they got the building and all the little white peaks set up. You know, like the, the peaks represent the mountains, and yeah, I mean it's cool. It has some character to it. Unlike most airports, they they don't have a lot of character. It's big. I do not enjoy taxiing in and out of Denver International. That's when it comes in so handy to have your co-pilot take over and handle the taxiing. It takes forever to get in and out. When I was a kid, it used to drive me mad. Back in the day, they used to really instruct the taxi rules that planes don't move any faster than you can walk. And yeah, when planes would land at the old airport stapleton or some of these other ones once they would land you're like okay great get in the terminal i have to use the restroom or whatever just get off this plane then it would take like another hour to get to the terminal and you're like what is what half hour to the terminal they would just move so slow everything has to move so fast these days i'm blown away at the speeds that they taxi now absolutely almost unnerved at how fast they taxi now. Somewhere along the lines of like, we got to speed this up, man. We got people to move places to be. Get a move on little doggies. I'll use my super powers here to freeze us and break out our drone. This is the, on the backside. Normally you come in on 
this side over here. You take that road over there. This is kind of charming. Really neat inside. You know, the main concourse areas are, you know, where all the food courts are down in here. Have this neat hotel over here. Expensive. Very expensive, sir. If your Denver airport doesn't look like mine, it's because I bought the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the airport. Because, you know, I'm going to be in Colorado. I, I buy all the Colorado stuff. I'm not really interested in buying all nor do I have the finances to get, you know, all the custom airports. And I don't, I don't, again, that's not really my, my thing. My thing is learning how to fly, but for Colorado, I, you know, I really appreciate getting all the, anything custom for it or enhanced the night packs. And this is where I do 99% of my flying. Yeah, you come in over here. This is the outside parking and then lots of parking in there. If you've been to Denver, you you will recognize it from this view over here. So this is what you're used to seeing when you come in. One moment, I'm being pinged and pinged and pinged. Okay. Let me just answer this text real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So, there you have it. There's Denver. Let's get back to our plane. And our VOR is off to the right of us at... Uh, we're frozen, so I can't activate this. Let me get your mic. There we go. That is course heading 150. So we're pretty much on it going the right direction but to be certain let's go ahead and pull that map up again yeah it's still ahead of us here and make sure that you're seeing what i'm saying good freak out i was my first couple of days back trying to get back into the live streaming making some horrible mistakes leaving screens open not having the right screens up i'm like see what i'm saying no I don't. You've messed up again, Kineas. There it is over there. We're getting our waypoint message for it. Wow, it vanished right when it popped up. By the way, it's over here.
So unless I am, if I am not transporting things Monday through Friday, I am usually available uh, to start streaming around 10 a.m. till about 5. Like today, days where I am transporting things, uh, like today, um, probably not on until 3 or 4 in the afternoon. And, and then... Uh, the missus going to one two eight decimal two five Kinias two one. Denver it, approach Kinias two one six thousand two hundred feet. Kinias two one Denver approach altimeter two niner decimal niner two continue as planned. So the missus usually gets here about five thirty, so I'm gonna be wrapping it up here once we land. And um and then I can come back for evening and then I usually come back for eve evening sessions if i don't pass out and i'm not too tired it's friday night so i'm probably not coming back for another session this evening and you know i'm thinking about there are a couple other live streams that i want to do anyway i'm thinking about uh getting back to Baldur's gate and yada 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 so i'm i i might but um I try to uh, stay really flexible with the evenings in case, you know, the missus wants to make plans. We need to contact them. So I appreciate you uh, tuning in this afternoon. I really do. Okay, so from the other side. Uh, if you find any enjoyment out of these whatsoever, I would really appreciate your help. I could really use your help because uh, just now trying to get back into the swing of things and I could really use uh, any likes and I really could use some new subscribers. So uh, I will definitely reciprocate, reciprocate. If you like and subscribe, I will go to your page and subscribe to you and look through your stuff and I'm sure I will find something that I will like as well I will return the favor so please hit the like and subscribe and if you're interested in when I'm flying because I'm trying to be flexible with the schedule and I'll hit the notify button at the top the bell icon and so it will alert you when I'm, when I am doing this uh, if the missus is out, I don't want to do anything tonight. I'm going to go play The Sims and just shove off and go play one of your games. Then, yeah, I'm, I might be back in the evening for, for this. But like I said, I, I kind of want to do some Baldur's Gate. I want to try out all the character classes. And I've been waiting for Manor Lords to come out. Oh, I can't wait. And I've picked up... Uh, I played the heck out of it and I haven't any live streams with it and it just got to the point where I got frustrated and walked away from it but I do have Banner Lord Mount and Blade and wow the combat in that is a trip not the battles themselves as far as moving people around but in the, the personalized combat that's really what it provides Unlike, you know, Rome, uh, Total War, those kind of games where you're directing all the troops. I also do have that Rome, Total War, Emperor Edition, but that's, boy. You have to, that's one of those ones that requires a lot of studying, too, to become good with all the strategies and techniques and...
I reinstalled uh the Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth because I wanted to remember what it was like to play that. That was such a fun game. And I do have Battle for Middle Earth 2. At some point I'd like to reload that and re-experience that again. Coming up soon, at some point in this year, they're going to release Cities Skylines 2. Unfortunately, we don't have a Sim, a new Sim City, and they've kind of taken over, which is sad. To imagine being the ones that blew an entire franchise. Imagine having one of the greatest franchises ever, and then being the Chowderheads to completely blow it and kill your franchise. I swore that a lot of these companies hired people that just specifically went in there like, yeah, hire me, and then they destroyed the company. Now EA owns them. Now they own the Sims, I think. Bunch of chowder heads. Transported from dispatch. Nice landing. Go to the parking and put your parking brake on. I'll be in touch. Right. Contact ground for your parking assignment, then shut down your engine. Give me a 2 one turn next taxiway. Decimal seven for Kinias two one. Oh, speaking of old movies, I was talking about Conan a minute ago. So I was on Prime last night and I saw that they had that eighties movie, The Sword and the Sorcerer. Remember the the guy that had the sword that had three blades and it could shoot out blades? And it had, uh, I think his name was like Lee Halsey playing the main hero and that one creepy dude that played all the bad guys in the 80s. And uh, man, that was unwatchable. I, as a kid, and you know, fine. But I even remember as a kid, I'm like, eh, this is not very good. And I tried watching about 30 minutes of it last night. Like, man, this is quite literally unwatchable. And just, oof. All right, well, let's get our money and call it a day. Transport from dispatch. Okay, nice job. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. So another couple of flights and a little bit more money for getting us the sky, dude. Let's find out how much we're going to make here. We spent quite a bit transporting ourselves up to Denver. Can't believe they charge so much. So currently at 2716 and let's see what we get. I think that was only like two or three. Transporter from dispatch. Oh. The cargo was picked up by the customer. Your mission is completed. All right, so we're at twenty-five thousand thirty-two bucks. So, we are. Everything is on board. We're about a quarter of a way to being able to afford at least a Cessna Skyhawk, and then <laughs> we have a yesterday's title on the video was a. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. It's going to be a long grind. So maybe this weekend I'll um, not necessarily live stream, 
but I'll just try to get myself in the right mindset and just grind a whole bunch and see how much I can make and see if I can get us up into uh, some better, some more interesting planes with more features, autopilot. I would love to get the Cessna Skyhawk with the G1000, no matter what. And then we have to eventually get a plane that's got uh, water capability and we have to get a helicopter and I'm not real good with helicopters and I don't have the um the professional setup for that you know I'm the with a cyclic and the the proper controllers to do helicopters properly so I'm gonna have to see what we can do there but we're definitely gonna need a helicopter for some of these emergency missions Okay, also, uh, I mentioned, yeah, like and subscribe, and I will like and subscribe back. And if you're doing live streams, especially anything related, well, I don't really care if it's gaming or whatever, but if you're doing flight, I'll definitely be checking it out. I do like this old artwork style. Men wearing hats and suits and golden age of flight. It's nice. All right, folks, well, you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday evening. Bless you for taking a minute out of your day to at least help me up by tuning in for a moment. It all helps, and I really, really appreciate it. So I will see you very soon. Have a great night, and we will catch you on the next episode.